Okay, so should you be upgrading from your Intel Mac to maybe a brand new M4 Mac like the Mac Mini sitting behind me? Let's do some testing. Got an Intel Mac from years ago. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so I get asked this question all the time. I'm telling you all the time. Someone comes to me and says they have like a 2019 Intel Mac and they're like, should I really be upgrading to like an M1, M2, M3, M4? Is it gonna make a huge difference for what I do? First of all, it's definitely gonna save you some time and that's what we're gonna get to in this video. Now your time obviously is different for a lot of people. How do you value your time? So if you're somebody that has to make, let's just say a round number, $50 an hour, you might be completely different. You might be able to, you know, not have to, you wanna spend the money basically to actually upgrade your system. But if you're somebody that is maybe retired and you just don't care, you sit back and do it as a hobby, you may not care, right? And a couple minutes here and there may make no difference to you whatsoever. So it really comes down to, I can't really answer the question for you, but what I can do is just show you some data points here. And that's what I'm going to be doing. So I think this will help a lot of people just understand the differences between a lot of these different systems. And we're going to talk about what they are. Now this is this video is going to be an update to a video I made about a week or about a week and a half ago somewhere in there you can check that video out but what I did is in that video I did some almost the I did the exact same test basically and I used my M4 Mac Mini back there and I went against my M2 MacBook Air sitting right here and I wanted to see the difference with real world video exporting tests now what I'm going to do in this actual video is I'm going to bring in two new systems I'm also going to be testing this is going to be right here this is an M1 iMac you can see right here with eight gigs of RAM. It's a system a lot of people have or a lot of people might wanna pick up on sale right now. And I'm also then gonna be throwing in the mix a 2017 27 inch 5K iMac sitting back there. I'll show you some pictures right here. And that thing actually has 48 gigs of RAM. So maybe you wanna buy that thing or maybe you actually have that in your house right now and you wanna know if it's worth it for you to upgrade to an M1, M2, M3, or M4. So hopefully this data point will help you. Now this test isn't completely fair and that's not what it's meant to be, right? We have different CPUs from different generations. Some of these are gonna have different RAM amounts and I'm gonna disclose that in the test here so you guys know that. But at the end of the day, we just have to pick this one, you know, this one kind of specific task and, and we don't have to rely always on benchmarks. So benchmarks are one thing. You can have Geekbench, you have Cinebench and that tells you something. But these are the real world tests that tell you a lot more. Okay, so really quickly right now, I'm just gonna take about a minute. I'm gonna show you the exact test I'm gonna be doing in all four different systems here. And it's important to understand exactly the test I'm running and how complicated it is and stuff like that. But it really doesn't matter because you probably aren't doing the same thing. Again, it's gonna come down to those data points. And then at the, I'm gonna give you individual times as I go along. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna have a nice chart that shows you all the comparisons of all four systems on the exact same test. These tests will be exactly the same on all of them. I'll have these exact same programs opened up and everything. I'll be exporting them in the same codec, all that kind of stuff, just to see exactly how these perform against each other in this day and age. Okay, for this first test, I'm gonna be using a program called CapCut, and that's a video editing. It's called CapCut for Mac. It's on my Mac, not on my phone, and it's gonna be you know, a video editing or export, obviously, type program, kind of like Final Cut Pro. Now, keep in mind that this is gonna be a 15-minute clip that I'm gonna be you know, exporting, so it's 15 minutes long, and I believe it's the end of it's gonna be about 3.1 gigabyte, the file size itself. So it just gives you kind of informa key information there. All right, let me just show you the test right here. So take a look at my screen. So here's CapCut, and this is gonna be a typical edit for me. You can see it in here. This is called CapCut, the video editing program. And I, typically, I have a whole bunch of clips in here. You'll You'll see in here that I have one, two, sometimes three. These are going to be 4K clips, so four, 4K video clips, not, not 1080p, but 4K. And I have audio tracks in here you can see. In here I'll have layers like text layers and stuff like that. I actually have a bunch of transitions in here. I have, um, let me go over here, I have actually, uh, this is going to be just effects. I don't know if you can look up there, but there's like some grainy effect up, up there. You can barely see it there, but there's going to be effects, effects layers and stuff like that. So this is typically, and again, this is going to be 15 minutes long right here, and then it's going to be, you know, when we export, it's going to be about three points. 3.2, um, uh, 3.1 gigabyte file size. Um, before I export it, at the same time, and, and this is gonna change a little bit, but I wanna have all this programs open. I have a couple more open right now, but I'm gonna close them before I run the test here. But I'm gonna have uh, Safari open. I'm gonna have these exact websites open, Mac Rumors, 9 to 5 Mac, like Wikipedia, and I'm gonna have Google, and then I'm gonna have ESPN here. So I'm gonna have those five websites open. I'm also gonna have the Photos app open over here. I'm gonna have um, let me just see here. I'm going to have Keynote open and uh, I'm going to have, let me just see here. 
and I'll have the activity monitor right here open. So those will all be open. Again, I'll close everything else before I run this, including, you know, I'm not gonna be uh, taking my screenshot here because that could affect the performance also as well. So what we're gonna typically do in here is when I click export over here, just to show you, I mean, I know you're probably not using this program, but all these are gonna be, I'm gonna name it something here, but I'm gonna do the resolution 4K. The bit rate's gonna be higher. That's important here because there's a couple different options, but I'm gonna go with higher. The codec's gonna be HEVC, formats MP4, and it's gonna be 24 frames per second for all it's worth. And you can see down here, it's 3.1 gigabytes is gonna be the total file size. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this out. So the very first one I'm gonna be doing this on is gonna be the M4 Mac Mini back here. And that M4 Mac Mini, we're gonna do this exact test right here, and then we're gonna come back and give you the exact time to do the 15 minute clip. How long does the export take? Okay, so before I give you the time here on the M4 Mac Mini, let me just tell you that that's the actually, it's, it's not the base model, but it is the M4 chip, not the M4 Pro. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, but I upgraded it to 512 gigabyte SSD there. So definitely it's a great system. If you check out my channel, I did a whole bunch of videos on that. I also did a video on this brand new 5K monitor by Asus back there as well. So check out the channel. So how long did that M4 Mac Mini take? It actually took four minutes and nine seconds, or 249 seconds, but really four minutes and nine seconds to render out a 15 minute video. So it's actually taking less than, you know, it's basically less than a third of the time of the full video. I mean, it only took four minutes and nine seconds to render, not render, but export that video out. So that's actually pretty good. It's impressive that it's one third of the time or even less than that. And I think that's a good time overall, but it doesn't tell us anything without other data points. So let's just keep moving. Okay, so stay with me. If you watch my other video, this is gonna be similar up to this point, but then I'm gonna be doing the other two systems. But right now I'm gonna be doing this right here. This is gonna be the M2 MacBook Air. This is gonna have the same 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD as the M4 over there. So we went ahead and we ran the exact same test. We had the exact same setup, all the same applications open. And how long did this one take? This one took five minutes and 49 seconds. So five minutes and 49 seconds, that comes out to 349 seconds to export that 15 minute video. So now we're up to a little bit more than a third of the time to do it, but still that was 549 in five minutes, 49 seconds. The other one was only four minutes and nine seconds. So between the M, this is the M2 MacBook Air and the M4 over there, same RAM, everything. It's not a huge difference. And I'll get into that in the chart, exactly how big of a difference it is. So I actually went through that and it was, you know, it's enough to make a difference for sure on longer edits, but let's keep moving. So the next one we wanna do here is gonna be the iMac right here. Okay, so the M1 iMac right here, we're gonna run the test here. Now, keep in mind that this has actually only got eight gigs of RAM. So this is the base model completely. The other ones had 16. And what I noticed right off the bat was when I looked at it, I had, this was the only one that actually was using some swap when I had everything open, including the, the video editing tool. I ran um, activity monitor and I could see that there was some swap being used. So it's definitely gonna affect it a little bit for sure. Um, the 2017 we'll talk about over there in a second, but this one actually sitting right here was did pretty well, better than I thought, but still, this is the M1 base and the RAM does make a little bit of a difference here. So what do we get in the numbers? We actually got, it took eight minutes and seven seconds or 487 seconds. So eight minutes and seven seconds to, to basically render that 15 minute file. So now we're getting to, you know, a little bit over half the time. So it's still a good time for a 15 minute video to, I keep saying render, but it's exporting it to export that out. So it's only, you know, it's only taking us eight minutes and seven seconds, which seems good on paper. But I mean, compared to the four, you know, it's basically double the time of, of the first one. So we're getting up there on time now. But what about if you have an old Intel Mac back here? Does it make that much of a difference? Well, let's check out. That thing I still use, and we're gonna talk about this. Okay, I'll show you some pictures, but here's my 2017 27-inch 5K iMac, and I love this thing. I upgraded it, I still use it. I actually do a lot of video editing on it, and I, my personal self, wanted to know if I'm really wasting my time doing it on there. It seems snappy enough. Now, all the systems had very, very smooth timelines. Um, that one over there, the 2017, did drop a couple frames here and there, depending on how many layers of 4K I had. Now, I upgraded that myself up to 48 gigs of RAM. So what it has is the i5 chip, so it's really the base model of that 2017 iMac with the 27 inch, the base level chip on the i5 that I only got the base model, but then I upgraded the RAM myself to 48 gigabytes. So does that make a huge difference? I mean, that's a ton of RAM on that thing. So we're gonna have to see, and I use it to this day. So I'm kind of shocked myself to see what this is gonna be. So let me go ahead and run it. Okay, wow. So I'm actually shocked. That actually took 19 minutes and 23 seconds, or 1,163 seconds. So 19 minutes and 23 seconds to render a 15 minute video. All right, let's go to the chart to compare these and then we'll have some final thoughts at the end of this. I actually didn't realize it was that big of a difference. It's kind of shocking. 
Okay, you can see the chart right here. So I have this in seconds because this makes a little bit more sense to me when I was kind of calculating some stuff out. But here's the M4 Mini. This is gonna be the brand new M4 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM. It took basically 249 seconds. Um, you know, you can see in the chart here, it comes out to basically four minutes and nine seconds. The M2 MacBook Air here with 16 gigs of RAM took 349 seconds. And that comes out to five minutes and 49 seconds. And so it looks like the M4 was basically 40% faster than the M2. So you got like almost a 40% increase here, which is pretty crazy. I think I screwed my stats up in the last video. I think it's about a 40% increase somewhere in there. All right, now we're looking at the M1 iMac here. It took 487 seconds. That's basically like eight minutes and seven seconds. So if you look here, it's, it's you know, look at the numbers. These are in seconds, but it's, it's almost double. So this over here, the Mac Mini comes out to, I believe it's around 96% faster. This is 96% faster than the computer sitting right here in front of me. So you're saving basically double the time, obviously, and everything that you do when it comes to that test, which is pretty huge, right? I mean, over time, that's gonna make a big difference. But then, here's the shocker. Here's the M5 iMac with a huge 48 gigs of RAM. This thing didn't show any swap at all because it's got all that RAM, so it wasn't using any swap at all. I mean, maybe like 100 megabytes or something, as I show you, but it wasn't a lot. It wasn't really affecting anything. But still, it took 1,163 seconds. That's 19 minutes and 23 seconds compared to 249 here. I believe this is around, this one right here is going to be, let me just hear, 367% faster. But still, it comes down to so many times more than that. I mean, it's, it's you know, four or five times as fast um, when you look at it. So, I mean, overall, this is just a massive kind of result here. And, uh, I mean, I got to take some, you know, something out of this that uh, maybe I shouldn't be using that. And we'll talk about this right now. But just take one, little, one more look at the chart here. I thought it was just shocking, you know, the big difference between the Intel and some, even the, I mean, even the M1 here is just a major difference. Difference. Okay, so for somebody like me, it makes this a massive difference, and I'm still using the 2017 for some reason, and I'll get into why I still use that every once in a while. I actually do about 120 video exports a year. That's just exporting. It's not even creating the videos or doing all the other tasks involved, creating you know thumbnails. Just that export, I do about 120 videos a year. So 120 videos time that time, you know, with the time difference between the 2017 and the M4 comes out to about 30 hours a year of my time, just just on exporting, and that's being conservative. I mean, if I value my time at $50 an hour, we're talking $1,500 just right there. So that $1,500 is way cheaper than just buying that system back there. You can buy three of those or two of those at least for the same cost. So right off the bat, that you know, you can see why it's totally worth it to me. Plus, that's just exporting. If I do you know, thumbnails and I just do everything else combined, it could save me maybe 60, 70, 80 hours a year of my own time, which could be a couple weeks you know, overall, and that could come out to thousands of dollars of, of your worth. So you have to think of it this way. I mean, but again, if you're someone that's retired and you just don't care and you're just having fun and you just do more stuff that's not this intense, like email, um, browsing the web, obviously like that, watching YouTube, it's not gonna make major differences there. So the moral of the story here is I can't really tell you if you should upgrade because obviously for me, it's a no brainer, but for you, it may not be. I mean, obviously, people, like I said, ask me this all the time, and I, I feel bad when I can't tell them, hey, you should really upgrade, but at least I'm going to be able to give you some information here, so hopefully this helps people out there. I know it's kind of a, a repeat of a couple of video I did a while ago, but then I added these other systems because I figured I'd have to test that, that especially the Intel back there, because I think a lot of people still use that, and they, they wonder the same thing, like how much of a difference is it going to be, and you can see it's a huge difference, so... I mean, that's all I got in this video, and uh, I just wanted to make a quick one, even though my videos are never quick. I just go on and on. But anyways, if you guys can help me, I do these all myself. I have no help from anybody, and it you know really wears me out. So I just wanted to say thanks for watching. But if you can subscribe, maybe hit the like button. It's going to help me grow, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.